Okay, uh, this is, I think, probably the final thing I want to do tonight. So this is Laura Trump breaking down exactly what the RNC did under her leadership that resulted in a win, okay? Like exactly what were the tactics? How did they pull this off? What was different this time than last time? What new strats did they implement? I want to watch this with you guys too. I've heard this is good too. So when did you get the job? When did when did the market announce PBA's that you covering, are covering, covering running? It all. You know, you you're responsible. Was it right after what Vivek did with Ronna McDaniel? Did you have any, have any clue he was going to do that when he went up on stage or no? Oh, that he wanted me to be the coach of yeah. the RNC. Um, he called me, so I got a call from him. This is probably back in January. And it was it was weird because usually he just calls me. But somebody from his office had texted me and said, could you take a call from your father-in-law in an hour? And I was like, why wouldn't you just call me? And then whenever the call came through, he obviously he called me, but then there were several people there with him. And the ask was, would you run for co-chair of the RNC? Because this is not a position you're appointed to. You have to run, and there are 168 members of the Republican National Committee oh, who shit. actually vote you into this position. So mm. had they not wanted me there, I wouldn't be here right now as the mm. co-chair of the RNC. He could say it all day Interesting. long. Interesting. Yeah. So establishment, no matter what, they have to select you they to be They have to under. choose you, yes. And what percentage do you have to get? Is it 60? It's, is it? Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's it's a less of an official vote. It's more of a all everybody in favor say aye Got it. type of thing. Yep. But mm. um, he called and he told me, that he thought that this would be a great position for me. And my immediate response was absolutely not. So she she effectively replaced, what was her name, McDaniels? Laura, Laura McDaniels? What was her name, McDaniels? Who was, she got, she got absolutely Ronna, Ronna McDaniels. Ronald McDonald. She replaced Ronald McDonald. And so she got absolutely roasted and destroyed during the Republican primary debates when Vivek Ramaswamy just just destroyed her. Wait, hold up. Rana Rana Rhonda McDaniels McDaniels is Mitt Romney's daughter? She's Mitt Romney's daughter? If that's true, if that's true, I had no idea. I'd never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. Look, I I knew the stakes in this election. I've seen how, how much Google they it. fought against this man. I've seen what he has to go through. And I knew how hard they were going to make this election in particular. And I have two young kids. I have a lot of other professional pursuits personally that I'm, I've, I have going on. And I knew what it would take to, to win this election. And I said, I don't. Ronna Romney McDaniel. Part of the Romney family. Um, McDaniel is a granddaughter of Michigan governor and business George W. Romney, okay, um, and a niece of Senate. She's a niece. Okay, 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 of Mitt Romney. Oh, oh. This is, dude. This is a certain phenotype. Have you guys known a woman that is like this? I, w I've, I've known. This is a certain type of woman. I've known like five or six women like this. I know it's a very specific build, very specific build, and they're all. I don't the know same. that I want to get the myself same. into this right now, to be honest with you. And he, of course, goes, "All right, honey, well, no pressure, but it's got to be you." Type of thing, of course. <laughs> yeah, He's no very pressure. persuasive. That was a pretty good Trump. By the way, it's not bad. It's yeah. not bad. I've worked on it. So, um, but did you know this was going to happen? Did you know Vivek was going to get up and blast? Ronna McDaniel or no? No, I didn't know this at all. So oh. this was a shocker to you. Yeah. Rob, I, we can't ever watch this enough times. This, this is don't February, mind and we're here, right? We're, right. we're here. No, no, we're at the event. Go ahead and yeah. play this clip. Swami, let me turn to you. Uh, please make your case. Why would you, uh, why should you be the <laughs> nominee and not the former here president? The epic I think clip. there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here, and I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. Is it? Can I ask you? Do you think at this point Vivek is already working with Trump? Did Trump put Vivek up to this so that we could get rid of Rana, Rhonda and insert Laura? Is this part of Trump's master plan? Or did it just kind of happen that way? 4D chess, okay. Cancer, the Republican establishment. 
and speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. Oh. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the hey, GOP Ron. voters wow. in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my, yield my time to you. Ready? And frankly, look, the people go. there are cheering for losing in the Republican he Party. go. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. Do you think the Democrats, and we've got Kristen Welker here. Kristen Welker. Do you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Kristen, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you and the media and the corrupt media establishment. <laughs> Ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Watch your face. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up Go. this information? Go. Answer the question. Go. Go. Look at her face. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I want to go home. <laughs> we need accountability wow. because this media Ready? rigged the 2016 election. Rigged. They He's rigged cooking. the 2020 election with a Hunter Biden laptop story. And they're going to rig Ron this Ron election. Swan. Your time is up. Uh, uh, Governor, Governor, Governor Christie, oh. why you? Wow. Lester, you know your career is up. Do you know what I love is whenever these people he in cooks. the media My who Indian try to like savagely true. attack all of us get just a little taste of what they throw out there, they have mm. no idea how to handle it at all. They are, that, that was a panicked face right there. Could you, you know what, to be fair like that, that is how you get change in a party. You know what, you know why the Democrat party, why the DNC is in the state that it's in? It's because they don't have shake up moments like that. Nobody, anytime somebody that maybe, okay, last time somebody popped up on the Democrat side of the aisle that maybe had the capacity to shake, do a little shaking, his name is Bernie Sanders. He got bitch slapped down and then he ended up bending the knee and endorsing the very same person that, in a very corrupt way, bitch slapped him down. He totally capitulated. Can you imagine if she had to be up on stage and answer that question? Oh, yeah. Forget it. So when that happened, what happens next to you? Who's calling you? So my father-in-law called with all these people. Right the after that, like that uh, night? Or what was night it was that? I think I this know. is February. I think right. this is what, February. What I'm, yeah. what I'm wondering is, is it like, hey... Babe, you're you're taking over, right? Well, I think he knew he was he before that, he knew that he wanted to make some changes. And I think he knew that in order to successfully, you know, win this election, you probably needed a little bit of restructuring at the RNC. And so he called and asked me if I would run for a co chair. And I told him no initially. And then to to be honest, that it was that night I was putting my kids in bed and thinking about how much time I would ultimately spend away from them. And how hard it would probably be on them that I was like, you know what? I think I have to do this because I got to make sure that these kids get to live in the greatest country on earth. And I never want to second guess and say, like, what if I had done this? So here we are. So, so Laura, quick question. What? Uh, so you come in. <clears throat> what do you think was the biggest thing lacking? I'm pretty sure the people were kind of telling you that Rana wasn't doing, that she was overlooking. That's one, That's the first question. And then the second on the days leading up, election day and all that stuff, because you were you were dispatching lawyers and to Pennsylvania and all that stuff. What was the biggest thing that you, you saw yourself doing in those days leading up to stop them from doing what they were doing? Well, I think first and foremost, we had to, we, we got rid of quite a few people at the RNC. And I think the RNC was probably doing too many things, you know, mm. trying to be everything to everyone, you're nothing to anyone, right? Mm, and so true. when Michael Watley and I took over, he's the chairman, we said, we need to actually pair things back and really focus on just three things. We want to have a world-class convention. Mm -hmm. We want to get out the vote and we want to protect the ballot. And those three things are literally all we focused on. So mm -hmm. we put together this election integrity operation and we said, we've got to pull so much of our resources into this and focus on this, get it structurally sound, set up, get people in place now so that we're not playing catch up, get the rules of the road set up, making sure that people are actually cleaning their voter rolls in states. Uh, we have sued Jocelyn Benson, who's the secretary of state of Michigan, so many times. I never want to hear her name again, my gosh. But it's because you have to have it set up right going into this election season. So the fact that that is really all we focused on, I think, was key. And then you have to get the message out, right? It's, it's one thing to just do all this in the background. But we wanted to make sure people knew. And I said it every time I got an opportunity, I felt like a broken record talking about our program, that we had a goal of recruiting 100,000 people to do the, the mm -hmm. jobs of poll watcher and poll worker around the country. We ended up with 230,000, by the way.
They put together a team of 230,000 people to watch the polls across the country. And you know what? It fucking worked. You know what? It worked. That's something they didn't have in 2020. They should have had it. They didn't. Some funny business went down. Crazy. Right. Um, 500 lawyers in every battleground state. But we also had to average. 500 lawyers in every single battleground state. 500 per state. Advertise it. And we had to make sure that people knew that we were serious. So every chance I got, I said, if you're going to go out there and cheat, we'll find you, we'll track you down, and we'll prosecute you to the full extent of the law. And then when we saw issues happen in sometimes in the primaries, which is when we tested this program, we saw them in the early voting periods, we addressed them immediately. We did not wait. And I think that was key because anyone out there who wanted to mess around knew we weren't playing. We were taking it very seriously and don't even try it. So I feel like uh, mission accomplished. In yeah, primary, go. what did you test when you said we tested it in primary? How did you? This is why we need Karens, guys. This is when people shit talk Karens. This is the true. When you love and cherish and empower a Karen, they can do beautiful things. They can do amazing things. See areas of weakness that they were going to try to play games there. What, what did you notice? Well, it was really the 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 program we put in place so we would have attorneys we every time a, a vote is cast and counted you need eyes on it you need people in the room watching and so we would have our attorneys deployed to these various locations during the primaries and if they would see a problem we kind of had a war room set up they would phone the problem back and then those <sighs> group of lawyers would figure out what's the best way to address it it was just we had to work out the kinks and say is this the best process in place for when the actual you know voting starts during early voting period um, teaching the people who we had trained in these locations what to look for. Note that the machine should never be connected to the internet, how they should be recalibrated every mm. single day. If they saw a problem, how do they report it? How do we get things done very quickly? Laura, how do you know this stuff? I've had to learn it all. Oh. You've had to, that's what I'm saying. You've had to learn it like in yeah. the last year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a quick study, so, turns so, out. So, when, when, so when the president calls you and says, Another I reason I said, I don't know if I want this job. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to learn. So all of this stuff is in the last year of learning. On Okay, so let me ask the other question. So seven battleground stayed, 500 lawyers in each, 1,500 the other places, because the numbers we've heard is 5,000. So of the 507, how are you finding the right lawyers? What is the filtering process? Good is question. there an ad saying we're interested? Are you calling and saying... And then are they communicating with each other? How are you filtering the hires? So we we had a, a uh, we had a website set up and we went around and we actually tried to go to local media markets and do radio and television. And we would host uh, an opening of what we called our election integrity offices across the country in all the battleground states and in all the major cities. And we wanted to get on TV and radio and say, hey, if you're a person who wants a free, fair, and transparent election? If you're an attorney, you don't need to be trained in um, in election law. We will train you in terms of what you need to do and what you oh need to God. know. Oh my Please God. go to this website and sign up. And we had a whole vetting process, a team who vetted all these people, oh my and God. then put the boots on the ground and got them in place. Did you, did you, dude? Like this is this is no small feat. Two hundred and thirty thousand election monitors, people people watching voting locations all over the country, and then. Three and a half thousand or more lawyers in all of the swing states, 500 per state. And they had, they had to recruit them, vet them, get them in the right place, train them exactly what to look for. Did you guys say what we can pay per this is this much per rate per hour? Or some of the lawyers who were better than others could get more? Most of these people were volunteer. Are you Whoa. kidding? What percentage of the 3,500 was volunteer? I would have to go back and actually look. But look, we had paid lawyers in the States, but I don't wow. think it was more. It was a very small percentage. I want to say maybe 10 percent, maybe 5 oh percent. And, yeah. and how and how much wow, time fuck. did they volunteer? To, if you added each of these 500 lawyers time volunteering to give in, how many hours did each give? It was all different. It's whatever people could do. You know, if you could do one day and that's all you could give, we would take you for the one day because that one day is important. You know, you have early voting that usually starts three weeks or so out from Election Day. And we need people to cover these these locations. So, but if you could strategy. give us more, mm. we would take what more. A brilliant but and people so but people were so desperate wow. to know that they tr could trust our elections. They were so desperate. Why do we have the disparity 
81 million votes in 2020 for a guy who campaigned out of his basement. And now people are going back True. and dissecting it and saying, well, wait a minute. Hmm. Something looks a little off here. Do you think True. you cannot have a country if people don't trust our electoral process? It's not the United States anymore. And we had to do this to make sure that not only did we catch people who were cheating, but that we turned out our voters. Because if you have... Dude, you know, have, you guys have probably seen this. You're seeing some some Democrat, some Democrats as they are seething and coping, they're frustrated today and yesterday, and they're looking at the numbers, they're saying, how did we lose 15 million voters? Guys, what happened in, in the last four years? We lost, guys, did we cheat last time? Uh, guys, low key though, did we cheat last time, guys? People around the country, imagine <laughs> even your guy them voted say in it. the past two presidential election sure. cycles. Why is it you would take your time to go out and stand in a line if you're saying I'm, they're going to cheat anyway? I might as well not even bother. So we had uh, the, the reason we had to do this. Obviously, we want to catch anybody cheating. We wanted to be a deterrent for anyone to cheat. But we also had to give confidence to our voters that, yes, your vote matters. Your vote counts. And when you cast it this election, it will be worth it. Who did you annoy the most? Oh, a guy named Josh Helton. I'm sorry, Josh. He's one of our, <laughs> he's one of the top of our election integrity. But lawyers. he's on your side. Oh yeah. No, what I mean is from the opposition. Who did you annoy the Who did most? You piss Who on off the other this, side yeah. was like, oh my God, they're they're a little bit too much. They're they're in this, you know. They're leave us alone. Like there was a clip I saw with this guy, tall, good-looking white guy, probably in his mid twenties. He's telling the mayor, he's like, you know what you're doing. Why are you making them go across the street to vote? What, what county was this, Rob? Do you I remember think this it was clip? Oh, yeah, he was outside. Yeah, because they're, no, they're you know what you're rally. doing. You know what you're yeah. doing. We've been asking for this. This is not a safe area. Who did you upset the most? Was it more the Obamas? Was it more the guys that know the games that you're kind of revealing? And they're like, wait a minute. They're, they're kind of uh, not allowing us to use the one card that we always use. Who was upset with you the most? Um, I'm going to say probably the DNC chair, Jamie Harrison who tried Ooh. to make fun of me and joke about me and Ooh. yeah, Laura, great job. You're going to pay off Donald Trump's league really DNC nasty chair. and just, you know, condescending initially. Um Ooh, Jamie Harrison fat. We got a fat. I'm um, sorry, Jamie. Looks like it didn't work out for you. Uh, <laughs> Michael Steele, who was also the former chair of the RNC also didn't have very kind things to say about me. So former I imagine the, the fact that this has been very successful. Yeah, yeah, we're not doing the Ryan. We're not doing the Romney Bush era rhino neocon thing anymore. Sorry. It's probably very annoying. Michael to Steele from the RNC was. Yeah, nice. but he now he's he's a never Trump guy. He hates us. He was yeah. part of the. Uh, and he was embarrassed the, by reflection. Probably. You're, you're, you're embarrassing him by the. Ref Thanks, Michael. Thanks for all the uh, support and the uh, encouragement. Uh, Laura, staying on the RNC here, because I think it is important. I think it's almost representative of who you are in terms of what Trump has done versus the establishment. I mean, the person whose job you took, uh, Ronna McDaniel, her maiden name is Romney. So she's a Romney. Yeah. So if you just want to use sort of symbolic measures, Trump shows up 2016, just gets rid of the Bush legacy. I mean, they're done. I would argue that George W. Bush, probably the worst president we've had in terms of policymaking, maybe Let's talk about the Romney legacy. The Romney legacy is just like showing up, losing, never winning, and then disappearing. Show up, lose, never win, never rack up a W, and then leave. Goodbye. Certainly in my lifetime. Vivek basically dismantles Ronald McDaniel. Boom, you show up. Yeah. You're, here you are with a MAGA necklace right yeah, here. Yeah, what's up? So <laughs> there you go. It's, it's, it's truly symbolic. Uh, the establishment is now done. And the Republican Party is now sort of made up under MAGA and Trump. Yeah. What will the future of the RNC look like with you at the helm, Trump at the helm? What will that look like? I mean, I think it's just a lot of common sense. You know, uh, one of the things we did initially was we got rid of a lot of staff. There were a lot of people there who were being paid, and I'm not sure exactly what their job was, um, but it just seemed excessive. And <laughs> it's, it's really the approach that Donald Trump has had to... Uh, when he's president and, and uh, you know, I think you saw the proof in the pudding comments and stuff. And I think the thing that people are going to reflect, especially on this election, is how much he's expanded the tent in the Republican Party. And that's my hope. Look, when I took this position, <laughs> I said, I want every person to realize that the Republican Party is for you. 
I want people who have never considered this to be a party for them to come on over. And you saw that in the vote totals. You saw voting blocks that the Democrats thought they didn't even have to work for coming over and voting for Donald Trump in mm. historic numbers. So my hope is starting in 2024 and going into elections in the future, we have people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all religions, whatever you do, whoever you love, whatever you look like, it doesn't matter. This is a party for you. One of the best decisions I ever made in my life. Whoa, there you go. By the way, he joined the army. He was joining the Division military. Assault. I saw somebody ask last time. There you have it. That's how they did it. That's dude. That is a very, very, very impressive military, like military efficiency, organization, coordination, logistics, very impressive operation. And it worked. And it fucking worked.